Welcome to Mom's Life Made Simple, the podcast for moms who want to go from chaos to calm, from overwhelmed to organized, and to find balance between family responsibilities and personal growth. I'm your host, Chanel Nielsen. Let's make mom life simple. Hello, and welcome to Mom's Life Made Simple. I'm your host, Chanel Nielsen. Today, we are going to talk about a simple strategy for meal planning, shopping, and meal prep. Now, to be honest, this is a kind of a hard podcast for me to record, and maybe not for the reason that you think. I, it seems very basic to me. It seems like, well, doesn't everyone do this? But this was actually a request that I got that I talk about how I plan meals, how I prep meals, and how I keep dinner simple. And so I'm happy to do this. I'm very interested to know if this resonates with you. If you want more content like this, let me know. If you're like, whatever, I already am making dinner every night. I know how to do this. Let me know that also. Um, So we're going to dive in and I'm just going to tell you how I handle dinners and meals and all the things with getting dinner on the table for a family. Now, you probably are already doing some of this. But I hope that kind of walking you through the process, you'll really see um, maybe some little ways that you can simplify, make things a little easier, streamline your system, and also save money because that is a thing that is important for me at the grocery store. It's almost like a, a game I play. It's like a I just want to do really good at um, spending you know, not spending too much money at the grocery store and getting the most thing for my back at the, at the store. So I am going to go through five steps that I do each week to make dinners happen for my family. I would say at least six nights a week, regularly six nights a week, we eat at home. On that last night, um, usually James and I go out for a date. And the kids are on their own. They're older now. And we're able to just let them handle their own dinner. And they usually have quesadillas or pasta or something like that. Or sometimes um, if it's pizza night, they have pizza. So super easy. Um, When they were younger, I would usually make some pasta before we headed out on our dates. So um, so meals come up quite often. We're not a family that's eating out a lot. So this is something I'm doing regularly. So Step number one, look at what you have. This is probably the most important step and one that I, the one that I'm most likely not to do. And it is the most important. So what I mean is just go through, take a quick glance around your fridge, your freezer, your pantry, uh, where you keep your fresh produce, if it's out in the churner or in your produce drawer, whatever that is, and really assess what do you have that needs to be used up? What do you have that you forgot about? What do you have that you need to throw out? Um, this is helpful in a couple ways, right? So I, it's not like I'm spending hours doing this process. It's really just a couple minutes where I kind of glance through and it's just almost a mental thing often, not where I'm sitting there with a checklist and writing stuff down. I'm just opening um, the, we have two fridges. And I open the outside fridge. Is there milk out there? Okay, no, I got to make sure and buy some milk or there's one milk. I need to stock up on that and kind of see what's out there. See what's in the freezer. Um, Look inside, you know, are there leftovers that need to be thrown away? That's helpful to do before going to the grocery store because then I have room for the new food and just kind of doing this quick check. Now, what happens in this process is I'll say, oh, I have a lot of chicken in there, or I have a lot of lettuce. Those were some things that I noticed when I did this for this week's shopping. And that helps inform step two. So step two is, what do you want to eat this week? Now, it's important that you first see what you have so that you're then um, planning what you want to eat around what you have. Because if you're like me, it's kind of like uh, that old food. My family's definitely that way. That old food that's in the fridge. Who wants that? We want something new and exciting from the store. We want you to go spend more money. Well, in all reality, I bought that lettuce at the store last week. It's still good. We should play our meal around it. And so um, it, what I want to eat is partially determined by that step one, by what I have. But there are a couple other things that I do 
um, when I'm going through this step, like, okay, what's going to make it on the menu? What do I want? One is I ask my family. I say, hey, what do you want for dinner this week? And I get answers. Sometimes I don't like their answers and I don't put them on the menu. Sometimes they'll say hamburgers, like, oh my gosh, I can only eat so many hamburgers, you guys. That's not going on the menu. Um, or other things like that, like, okay, thanks, but we just had that. What else? Um, another thing was, what do I want to eat? Maybe this is the hard part for you. You're like, I don't know what I want to eat. So this isn't seeming really simple. If that's the case for you and you just have this dinner amnesia where you're like, I can't remember what we like to eat. I can't remember any any ideas. What I suggest you do is just make a master list. Write down all the meals. You know, what would you order if you went out to a restaurant? What menu, what uh, menu, what recipes have you tried that your family has liked? What are some simple things that you could do and just write down? You know, probably there are some that we, most of us have in common. Tacos, soup, um, pasta, sandwiches, whatever. Just start a list going. And then when you sit down to make your menu, you can have this master list. Maybe it's even in your phone on the notes app of your phone. You pull it up. And if it's generic enough, like say it just says tacos or it just says sandwiches, then you can actually use that for a lot of different variations, which brings me to my next point. If you get stuck in this step of what do I want to eat, it can be really helpful to have theme night. I do this partially each week by having Tuesday night is Taco Tuesday, Friday night is pizza night. The other nights are loose and we do different things, but we have those two nights that are themed. And so what that means is I don't have to really think about those. Now I switch it up. Sometimes we get pizza from Domino's. Sometimes I'm making pizza from scratch. Sometimes we're buying frozen pizza from Costco. Whatever. We're switching it up so it's not exactly the same every week. But I have a good idea on that night of a, a good starting point. And so that makes it really easy, which leaves me with five nights instead of seven that I need to think through. Now, if it's fun for you, and keyword here, if it's fun, if it's not fun, don't do this one. If it's fun, this is the time when you're thinking of what do I want to start looking through those recipe books that you have or scrolling through the recipes you've saved in Pinterest and figuring out a new men a new recipe or two that you want to try. Um, and you can add things to your recipe and that's or to your menu. And that's especially true if it's kind of stale, if you're making the same old things, if your family's tired of what you've been making, then maybe it's trying to add in a few new things. Um, but again, you can start if if you if that's not fun for you. Stick with the simple. Stick with, here's my master list. Here are 20 different things we can eat. And I can make variations of them. My pasta could be uh, lemon arugula fusilli. That is a delicious recipe. Or I might make spaghetti, spaghetti and meatballs. Like it could go either way, but it's still a pasta night. Um, so that master list will really help you to simplify what you're going to do. Step number three, once you've figured out kind of what you want in general terms, it's time to make a menu. So this is going from, you know, just saying pasta to that next step to saying spaghetti and meatballs. And you're going to write down each day of the week. Now, again, I keep it kind of loose. So it's not like Monday, we're having this. Tuesday, we're having this. I write it all down, but I, depending on how that day has gone, depending on how early I thought of thawing the meat for dinner, um, will kind of determine what we have that evening. But I make a menu and as I'm making the menu, I make a list. So I just have figured out, okay, we've got salad, step one. I see what's in the freeze, in the fridge, in the freezer. We've got lettuce in there. So we're going to have a salad. Uh, what do I want to put on that salad? Well, I want to put tomatoes. So I write tomatoes on the list because now I've written down uh, the menu item is salad. So on my list are then the things that I want on that salad. We've got tomatoes. We've got salad topper from Costco. We've got, um, you know, some kind of protein, hard boiled eggs, whatever. And I'm writing those things down that I need to buy in order to do those menu items. The other thing that I do in this step when I'm making my menu is I look at the calendar 
to see what we have going on. So sometimes um, at the week I'm recording this, we have a birthday in our family. And so on the birthday night, we are going to go out and we, we're going to go out to eat as a family. And so I don't need to plan a meal for that night. Sometimes we have church activities and I need to make chili for the chili cook-off or whatever. So I need to look at the calendar to make sure that what I'm planning for the menu lines up with what we have going on for the week. And then for each dinner that I put on that menu, what do I need to buy? Um, I do this around dinners. So I'm planning those seven dinners for the week. And then for lunch and breakfast, I just stick to a few basic staples. We've got some cereal, we've got some oatmeal, we've got toast. Um, is there anything else? We've got eggs, just a few things that are pantry staples. And if we want to get fancy, you know, we can. We've got some other things, but I'm not really planning it in the menu. Lunch is the same way, except for me, I do, I home most of the time for lunch. And so I like to make a couple of things for lunch for myself. So I'll make a big pot. Something I love is called vegetable hot pot. And it just has all these vegetables cooked in a little bit of chicken broth. And it's super yummy. And I'll make a big pot of that at the beginning of the week and then eat it with a protein all throughout the week. Or other things like that. Maybe I'll plan a specific salad or there's a recipe that I want, but I want to make sure I have all the ingredients. So I'm thinking of one lunch that I can kind of repeat throughout the week um, and then eat leftovers. And other than that, we just have a few staple items that we know we can go to and make a lunch that's pretty quick, pretty easy. So that's step three, make a menu and list. Step four is shop. So shop, you've now made your list. You have what you're going to eat. You have your list of things to buy. Just follow your list, go through the store and buy what's on your list with a couple of exceptions. And here are my exceptions. One is if anything's on sale, uh, you might want to change your menu right there. Crazy. I know, totally spontaneous, but change what you're going to eat when you're at the grocery store and say, oh, well, we were going to eat pork, but the pork is really expensive this week and the beef is on a great sale. So we're going to have beef instead. And maybe that kind of switches up, uh, you know, whatever sides go with it or whatever else you're going to do. But having that little bit of flexibility can be really helpful. The other thing is, if it's on a really good sale, of course, stock up, buy a little extra, and then you'll have that in your freezer for next week. So when you're, and we'll get to that, but you'll, you can stock up and buy a few extra things so that you're buying at the best price, buying in bulk. Um, I also do the same with produce. So the way that I do produce, I never sit there on my grocery list and write, okay, this week we're going to have cherries and we're going to have grapes and, you know, we're going to have these specific fruits. What I do instead is I just know that I'm going to be looking up and down that produce section, what looks good, what's in season and what's on sale. And what's awesome is those are usually the same thing. It's usually priced really low because it's in, it's, uh, in season and so it's rolling and so they have a lot of it. Today, when I went to the grocery store, raspberries were really inexpensive and so I bought a lot of raspberries because I know my family likes them and we'll go through them and that wasn't on my list per se, but now it's a snack that my family can have and will definitely eat. So I do change plans at the grocery store. I leave that little bit of flexibility for anything that's a good deal um, that I can stock up on. Okay, step five is execute. So now you have your menu. You have figured out what you want. When I'm on the ball, what I like to do is in the morning, is as part of my morning routine, I look at what's the plan for dinner tonight and I get out that meat to thaw. It doesn't happen every day, but it does happen regularly enough that we can uh we can you know usually use that for a system um so we stick to the plan unless life gets in the way and i know for me i know for you life does get in the way sometimes so we need a backup plan for dinner and i have a couple of ideas for backup plans for you one is freeze your leftovers so when I made something and there's a lot of it left over, if it's some, you know, big meal and maybe half my kids are gone at a football game or they've, they're they somewhere else or I cooked for the whole family, but they're not there to eat it, then instead of putting it in the fridge and eating it for lunch leftovers, I'll put it immediately into the freezer and 
next week when uh, dinner rolls around, then I just pull that out, reheat it, and what's old is new. It's a brand new dinner. Um, and the other thing is I have some easy meals and I have some last minute meals. Maybe those are the same thing, but um, things like breakfast for dinner. My kids love that. They think it's such a luxury to have breakfast for dinner. And we all know that is like the simplest thing to make. Some scrambled eggs, some toast and some bacon or some pancakes, whatever cooks up really quick. Or those things that I mentioned earlier that are like lunch staples. They're pretty easy. They're usually on hand and we can just throw those together really quick. I also like to purposely buy in my grocery shopping some things that I can keep in the pantry, knowing that if I need a last minute dinner, they're there and they're ready ready to go. So one of those is um, tomato soup. Trader Joe's has a really good tomato and red bell pepper soup that I love. And um, that just stays in our pantry and we eat it when we've gotten home and it's dinner time and we, we're not prepared for whatever reason or things have just gotten busy or I'm tired and I don't want to make dinner. And so I'll heat up a can of soup. Well, it's not in a can. It's like in one of those cardboard boxes. However, it's really good and it's easy and it tastes good. Um, pasta, you know, those kind of things that are staples or... Um, other recipes that maybe you found that are just kind of opening a bunch of cans, things like taco soup or just throwing a bunch of stuff together from the pantry and it comes together really quick. So while we have a plan for dinner, because it is so relentless, because it's happening night after night after night, I strongly suggest you have a handful of meals. And if you're going with the master list idea, have a few on there that are like, these are my backup backup ideas so that you can just put those together. You still have dinner on the table and you're avoiding the cost, the um, inconvenience, the unhealthiness of going out to eat um, for your family. And you just have something really easy to throw together. So finally, that's step five, but this leads into repeating itself for step one. So after you've executed and you've gone through the week, you've gone through your menu, you go back to the beginning and you look at what you have. Maybe you had a prayer, but the plan didn't go the way you thought it would. And so you have everything to make this meal that you thought you were going to make, but you didn't make. Make sure that gets on the menu for next week. Maybe, like I said, no one was there on the night that you had lasagna. So lasagna gets on the menu again and you're pulling it out of your freezer. So use what happened the previous week in part of this planning process for the next week. So that is my simple five-step solution for meal prepping, shopping, meal prep, all the things to get dinner on your table in a way that's pretty easy, pretty doable, and will allow you to feed your family the way that you want to feed them in a way that works for you. So like I said at the beginning, I'm really curious to know if anything stood out to you. Is there anything new that you heard today? Is there anything different? Is there anything that you're like, you know, I have actually a better system than what you're doing right now. Let me know. I would love to hear it. You can reach out to me uh, through my email or if you're watching on YouTube, you can leave a message there in the comments. I'm also on Instagram. I haven't posted anything on Instagram for a long time, but I do see messages. So you're welcome to reach out there as well. All right. Thank you for being here. Thanks for listening to Mom's Life Made Simple. Need some help making your mom life simple? I offer group coaching programs using my four-step method called the Mom's Method. This is a process of manifestation, organization, mobilization, and simplification that will give you the balance, progress, and joy you're looking for. Visit ChanelNielsen.com or find me on Instagram or Facebook at Chanel Nielsen Coaching. I love to hear from you. Reach out with your questions, your feedback, and let me know how I can help make your mom life simple.